I realized the irony of standing here in front of a Western style castle in the middle of Vietnam. Welcome back and good morning. Today we're headed off to the Banat Hills and the Golden Hands Bridge. It's another day trip from Da Nang. I had seen the Golden Bridge being held up by two hands on Instagram years ago and since then I had very much wanted to visit it. I'm sure you all had seen it on the internet. The Sun World Company, as you could see that logo on the Ferris wheel, opened the Bana Hills cable car in 2013. The rest is history as you will see. Turns out it's pronounced as Bana Hills and not Bana Hills or Bana Hills. It's supposed to sound like bananas because there were a lot of banana trees around the area when the French colonists set up a mountain resort here in 1919. The area was damaged during the war until recently. I honestly didn't know much about Bana Hills other than the Golden Bridge. We were in for a surprise as on first glance we had arrived at an amusement park. So have I become a Disney vlogger instead of a travel running vlogger? Hmm, I wasn't expecting this. This is like an amusement park, kind of like a, a Disneyland or a Universal Studios. I thought we were going to go to the mountains or the hills. Yeah, this reminds me very much like Disneyland when I was growing up before it got super crowded and expensive. Bana Hills is located about 26 miles from Da Nang and you can see we've changed from the coastal environment to something more mountainous. It's a sun world symbol on what looks similar to the Imperial Citadel entrance in Hue, kind of like entering Sleeping Beauty's castle at Disneyland. Unlike all the other excursions where we've stopped off for coffee, but not today. We need to get to the line to the cable cars quickly. First of all, this looks like a replica of Hoi Yang. That will be featured in an upcoming episode, so make sure to like and subscribe to my channel. This is what it looks like when they try to bring Disneyland to Vietnam. Actually, it's pretty orderly. After what seemed to be a long walk from the parking lot, we finally arrived at the cable car entrance. No trams here, unlike at Disneyland. Ooh. Oh wow, it's going fast for a cable car. We're riding high above in the Bana Hills. This is no Matterhorn ride. The Bana cable car holds the world record for the longest non-stop single track cable car at 5,801 meters in length. Cable car ride is truly a highlight of the trip. It takes you high above the treetops, offering breathtaking vistas of the hills and valleys below. The feeling of floating among the clouds is surreal. You were in the cable car for a while. It seemed like an efficient way to get people from the foothill of the mountains to the top as there were many cars. I can't believe it. This really does feel like an amusement park. Uh, like Disneyland, Universal Studios, except no roller coaster, so it's not like Magic Mountain. I can't think of any amusement parks in the U.S. that features a wine cellar. Remember, this area originally was a French mountain resort and this wine cellar is left over from those days. I guess we know what's important to preserve here. Hamru means underground wine. For all you wine connoisseurs out there, you can pay an extra fee to enter for a wine tasting. This part of the park features the Ling Ng Pagoda. If this looks familiar, then you're right. You may recall the one in the Marble Mountain. I'll add the link to my Da Nang City vlog for you to see it. And there's even a replica of the dragon statue that was at the Marble Mountain. This is what we've been waiting for, the Golden Bridge or Cao Vang. I feel like this is Instagram versus reality, except I'm in the reality slide because it's really crowded, so it's really hard to take a good selfie here. Keep your expectations low when you're here on the bridge, it's super crowded, so you're not going to get really any good solo pics or videos unless you're really good at Photoshop. I didn't give up. Eventually, I got a good shot. This was the best I was going to do under these circumstances. We got on another cable car to check out the rest of the park. Times like this, 
I'm glad we had a tour guide because it is overwhelming with which cable car to get on and what part of the park you're in. We got off at the entrance to the French village. Look, they even have can-can dancers. There are lots of cultural cuisines in the park, including Japanese, Italian, French, Korean. Our tour guide was a little shocked that we just wanted Vietnamese food. Hey, it's all about what is novel to you, and authentic Vietnamese food is what we were looking for on this trip. We got the Bung Gia, which is a sweet na to Hanoi. Now for the rest of the park. We then went to the spiritual zone. I have to admit, I've never been to an amusement park where spirituality was heavily incorporated into it. I do feel at peace here in the spiritual area of the Sun World, Bana Hills Park. You have to appreciate the juxtaposition between the Eastern spiritual aesthetic with the European village castle aesthetic. So now we are going to explore the medieval section of the park. And the irony is, I'm not a big amusement park person, and here I am in the middle of the amusement park. That carousel looks like the one at Disneyland. This one looks like the Trevi Fountain in Rome. This reminds me of the Luxembourg Gardens in Paris. We're back in the heart of the French village with a chateau and a replica of Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. There's one more area to explore, but we had to take a train. We're taking the train to Luna Castle. Nope, that's not Edinburgh Castle or Hogwarts. That's Luna Castle. The train lets you off at the lower level of the castle. No need to cross any drawbridges here. Inside the castle features movie theater screens upstairs and live entertainment downstairs. standing here in front of a western style castle in the middle of Vietnam. By the looks of the clock at the top of the hour, maybe we're in Switzerland or in Prague with its astronomical clock. That looks like Atlas holding the weight of Bana Hills on his back. It's been a long time since I've been to Paris and I would like to visit the Louvre again. However, I don't think this one here has the portrait of Mona Lisa. Since we had Luna Castle, here's the Sun Castle. Who knew you could find a gem of Europe in the mountains of central Vietnam? It was time to head back to the French village to meet up with our tour guide. Hey, those were the performers at Luna Castle. I feel like we're in the backstage at Disneyland. I'm not sure what I had expected today going to the Bana Hills, but whatever this place is, whatever this amusement park is supposed to be, I still had a great day. If anything, just spending the day away from the heat of Da Nang was worth it. It's nice to be up here out in the mountains. Back onto the cable car as we go. At least I had one more view of the Golden Bridge from the cable car. After all, this was the main purpose of our visit. We're about to take off. This is the very last ride down. Oh 
There's a vomit bag in case you ate too many hot dogs, and yes, they did have hot dogs at the concession stands. This time, I was able to appreciate more of the serenity of the mountains since I knew what to look for. The amount of tour group vans here is astounding. This is a huge tourist attraction. However, locals like to come here as well and they offer reasonable discount to residents. So what do I think of Bana Hills? It's one part a spiritual haven, one part Epcot at Disney World, one part medieval castle with some Vietnamese food tossed in. If you ever find yourself in Vietnam, specifically in Da Nang, make sure to add Bana Hills to your itinerary. Thanks for joining us on this incredible journey. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more travel adventures. Oh,